great day in Mumbai, but we've got something to bring the sun out. Ferrari's Lusso. And what we're going to do today is cheat a bit. We're going to sail across to Mandwa on this roll-on, roll-off ferry and see whether we can access some great driving roads without having the pain of going through the tolls and the speed breakers and what have you. Will this be easy? Are we going to have a real blast? Come along for the ride. This will also be a good time to say goodbye to Ferrari's four-seat supercar, the GTC4 Lusso T. Soon to be replaced by the new Ferrari SUV or FUV, this lowrider is sure to be missed. First steps, however, are difficult. It involves clambering up a steepish ramp and getting onto the jetty. Luckily, the Ferrari has a lift feature, so I raise the car and gingerly edge forward. It clears easily, much to my surprise. So we're finally here, we're in the boat and we're going to enjoy the sort of 40 minute ride across to the other side to Manwa. Must say, despite a bit of monsoon swell, the stability of this Greek built ferry is pretty impressive. In fact, it's so good, it's rated for long sea voyages and rough seas. In fact, M2M1, this boat, was sailed all the way from Greece, where it was made. 95 meters long, 18 meters wide, the 700 ton ship can take 145 cars between its main deck and its hidden lower deck. But since we're here, let's go up to the bridge. So on the bridge of the Roro, and as you can see, it's a different sort of boat. You can sail it both ways. It can either be pointing that way forward or this way forward, and that makes it easier. You don't need to spin it around. And that gives it a unique set of controls. There are control panels on both the right and the left. And when the boat changes direction, the crew go from pointing one way to the other. To help it move, the M2M1 has four individual engines and four propellers placed one at each end. And because these swivel 360 degrees, they drive and steer the craft. Each of the Caterpillar V12 diesels put out approximately 660 horsepower. And should the captain want, he can do a pirouette and spin the boat around its own axis. While the top speed of 12 or 15 knots doesn't sound very fast, we are soon on our way and enjoying the vistas of the city drifting past. This really does feel special as we sail south and east. And instead of battling traffic, we are enjoying a visually arresting cruise. And as ever, this sea breeze is just invigorating. As the mainland and jetty of Mandwa at the other end approach, we get some rollers that toss the boat around a bit. But before we know it, it's time to get off and all well within the hour. Back in the Lusso, I raise the suspension and get ready to crawl off. But the ramps at the Mandwa side are much smoother and we are on dry land in minutes. Can't believe it's that close. The ferry makes it really accessible. And wow, I think this is going to be a fun day. As ever, the roads are something of a mixed bag. It isn't that you hop off and get onto some great roads. There are a few crowded stretches and bad patches too. The Lusso has been dead easy to drive all this time. Despite the engine being highly strung and capable of a seriously strong 610 horsepower, it's been a real pussycat at low speeds. You do 
need to take care. The Lusso takes everything in its stride. Speed breakers, markets, railway crossings, everything. And I only use the lift function once. And then the road begins to open up. This feels like magic. Ahead of us, no concrete jungle, no toll plazas, no traffic and just loads and loads of green with some good driving roads scattered around. That's when the Lusso starts to come into its own. That V8 engine is at the heart of all the excitement. Twin turbo engine just has an incredible amount of urge in the mid-range and that's what makes it so usable. All you need is a tap on the throttle. Whoa! <laughs> that's really some responsiveness. The initial urge feels truly spectacular. The outside blurs into a green tunnel, the engine sounds even angrier in sport and responses are so crisp and delicious, I can't resist harder and longer pulls. There really is a special sort of joy in blasting along these roads, especially when you get an open stretch. And then we get to the guard rolls. Far from going, oh no, small road, it screams, go for it! The way it is so neatly tucked in within the wheelbase, it feels extremely agile. And then there's a rear wheel steering to help it out. It's surprising how agile and nimble it feels on its feet and you almost feel like you can duck and tuck into any sort of corner. The agility is actually quite baffling. Even the operatic exhaust sounds super. Soon it's time to return to the jetty and we mark time and make our way back. Must say the Lusso T delivered much more Ferrari than expected. And what it lacked in visual drama and Vitruvian proportions, it more than made up for in dynamic performance. As we roll back into the Bombay Harbour, it will be sad to see the 4C GT give way to an SUV. But that's what the market wants and if Ferrari is to be believed, its SUV or FUV will be even nicer to drive. Well, here's looking forward.